I want to talk about, yes, The Vegetarian by Han Kang. Um, it's a book a lot of people like, uh, a lot of people like passionately, and uh, many people I respect like it passionately. Um, I don't, and um, it has been a principle of this uh, channel not to criticise books, um, but I feel strongly that there are issues with this book that I haven't seen addressed. Uh, and given that I'm not going to have any impact on sales or its prestige, um, given that it's just won the Ma International Man Booker Prize, um, I'm uh, going to forgive myself for being sterner uh, on this novel than perhaps I, I, I might. Um, but actually, I think it's more about other issues than from what I think about it. Uh, one is uh, obviously issues of translation. Now, if you don't know, um, this novel uh, was translated by someone who made the decision quite late on that she was going to try and translate uh, a work in from Korean, and she chose this book. Um, she had learned Korean or, uh, kind of recently, um, and um, I didn't sort of ask permission or, or whatever, she just thought, well, you know, I'll give it a go, I'll see how I do. And then uh, eventually um, uh, some relationship was then uh, developed between her and uh, the writer and they worked on it together and that's what we have. Um, so if we look at the translation, uh, I uh, and people have thought it's it's a translation of genius. It, it's um, and some people whatever. I I have a real problem with the translation. Now, the key thing, of course, is if I don't if I feel I don't have a problem with the translation in the sense that I don't think it's been correctly translated. Because how do I know? I don't speak Korean or read Korean. Um, the key thing is though um, is if I think the translation is poor because. I feel the writing is bad, how do I know it's the translation or in fact it's actually a very faithful translation of bad Korean writing or bad writing in Korean? Um, and I can't answer that question and neither can most people because m most people can't read Korean. So we're, in, we're stuck. So we have to judge the book obviously by the sentences in English that we read and and the, the overall tone um, and you know choice of I mean I don't you know choice of metaphor but what's interesting is there are there are, there, are, there are a lot of cliches in this book there's sort of things like you know bathed in sunlight and and sort of little idioms that that are that you know the, the, in terms of the reviews on the back they talk about sort of you know, plain prose and, um, you know, a sort of poetic plain prose. But there are, there's plain prose that's deliberately plain, but is is taking you into the heart of something because its plainness is sort of austere and formally important to drive the idea home. And I don't think that's the case with this. Um, because... The idea is really strong, which is this idea, which is this, the, the, the vegetarian's psychological journey is, is, is very interesting and it's strange and it's unsettling and I haven't read it before. So for all, uh, uh, but one has to, one has to set aside, I think, the execution to decide that that's the case. Um, uh, and the execution has to be the fault of the translator. The translator, if you don't like it now, lots of people do, and I don't want to, to suggest that people are wrong. I'm, I, you know, I am very much in the minority about this book, and I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm in a minority where I'm not entirely convinced that, that, that everybody else is wrong and I'm right. Um, uh, and there are times when that's the case. Uh, if one wants to get a little um, esoteric, I feel that all these people who love the French 19th century composer Berlioz 
are all wrong. You see, he's a great composer, and I am right. Um, he's a terrible composer, and his music is unlistenable um, for its for its just its sort of I, I don't know. I mean, you know, just for, yeah. So I mean, and there are others. A list, for instance, um, that's not a composer. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of novelists now, but I can't. But but I don't think this is the case for me. I think I, I'm not getting something, and maybe I'm not getting something because what it's trying to do is not aimed at, or doesn't provide me with the access points. But there is issues with the translations. Um, but I think there might be, you know, there are other issues also with the book. So if the, uh, you know, the opening, pa I don't, you know, I don't want to give anything away. So if you haven't read it, you plan to read it. Um, obviously, read it because lots of people love it, and, and not because I and don't read, don't not read it because I don't. But the key thing is. Uh, I know I keep saying key things, so one of the many key things is I, I'm almost within the first few pages. I'm I feel as though I'm not sure I trust the writer because what we have is is uh, a first person narrative. It changes throughout the, the book. A first person narrative that is claiming a kind of uh, kind of quotidian um, or, or or the desire for a kind of quotidian life, and it lists how this person wants to live his life. But actually, in its own sort of ironic way, it's quite insightful, this person who wants to lead that. Sorry, I need a cup of tea. His, his understanding of what he wants from life and how he wants to execute his life is actually um, full of kind of his own personal insight, but that person wouldn't have insight. So it almost feels that even though that's in the first person, it should have been in the third person, whereas the second... Um, uh, the second should have been in um, should have been the first person and not the third person. So that for me they are they are creative mistakes um, because if 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 we're not engaging with the voice, the main character who doesn't have a voice but is a kind of you know a kind of recessive and mysterious um, biological process even um, at the back at the back of the book um, at the back of the story even though it's driving the story if we can't believe in in, in, in those voices she becomes even harder to kind of um, uh, engage with or picture or and so that's a problem. But for me, it's 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 down to um, moments of translation, and moments of translation, or sorry, moments of writing that 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 take me out of the book because they feel they feel wrong and you know, sort of objectively bad. Um, mean that, that because the book is so slight in its own way and it's so delicate that those sentences just. Um, just sort of, you know, the book kind of cr kind of crumples and creases, and I can't, I can't get any purchase on whatever because I, I feel that, and it's because for me the you know, this person has chosen to be a translator, not and, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a writer, and I think that's the problem. And I think the the, the key line for me, and we're on page eighty two, and I, I really struggle from the beginning, and I know this is. So, such a tiny thing, but given the delicacy of the of the objective, surprisingly, his sister-in-law was already waiting at the station exit, slumped on the steps as she'd been as if she'd been there a long time, wearing a fairly junky wearing a fairly chunky brown sweater over shabby jeans. Now I'm going to stop there because I wouldn't allow fairly chunky brown sweater in anything I wrote because A, we've got an adverb there and they're dangerous but also fairly and it, ha it she repeats that it's one of, it's one of the kind of um, one of the ticks uh, the idiosyncrasies of the text is fairly is one of her favourite adverbs her favourite modifiers um, 
But can you have a fairly chunky sweater? Do you, is, it, is it either chunky or not chunky? It's either a sweater. Now, it's interesting because when I read that, a fairly chunky brown sweater, um, I, I'm pulled out of the text because it, it's bad writing. Worse than that is it also makes me think only about the chunky sweater. And then three or four pages on, um, she puts his sweater on over her sweater. Now, it's very hard to put a sweater over a sweater to begin with. To put one sweater over a fairly chunky sweater is another thing. And it's not a novel that can allow that level of imprecision. Um, and that happens throughout it. Um, so I object to that sentence on, on, on the grounds of subjectively bad writing. I object to it because um, it pulls me out of a, of a very, very subtle and fragile and elusive text. Um, but the, the next bit is, is concerns, and this is always a um, this is always something that one has to be careful of when, when writing, is the, the next um, story, the next part, is about a creative artist, or an artist. Um, and there's a real problem here, because I, I do feel that writers are not very good at um, thinking like other kinds of artists. So here we have someone who decides that they're going to enact um, a, you know, a, a creative enterprise on the body of the vegetarian. Um, and what we have is something that, for me, feels, once again, sort of cliche. It's like he decides to paint her body full of blooming flowers um, and film it. And I just, I just kind of feel that that isn't particularly profound. That it's very obvious. It's all like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll, um, you know, what's going to be really kind of emotional and rich and physical and, and you know, uh, say something, you know, profound about, I don't know, something. Oh, no, yeah, well, I'll paint her body. Ooh, how erotic. Um, a, it's probably a bit terrible mess. Um, and B, it's, you know, it's kind of like, that's you, you, that's the first thought you as a writer. That's the first thought you have, and then you park it and go, "No, that's the first thought." Now, what can I do with this? If I'm going to really say something interesting and different and profound about what this woman is doing to her, her body by becoming vegetarian, um, uh, one has to think more deeply than that. Because, as everyone you know, well, there's a lot of people know, and, I, and I'm sure I've said this before. If you can express an idea in a sentence, you don't have to do it. You just merely say, I had this idea, this is woman who, hey, and I was going to pay, ooh, you know. Uh, so, yes, so it, it doesn't work for me on all of those levels. Um, and I was shocked to find that it won the International Man Booker Prize. Um, and I was doubly shocked because I thought it was awarded to a, a writer and their oeuvre, but actually, no, it's now awarded to a book. Um, but anyway, I hope I have convinced you that I have thought deeply about this in terms of why I don't like it, rather than just had a sort of, you know, knee-jerk reaction um, and come on here and had a rant. Um, I don't think that's... Uh, you know, um, but anyway, it, it just, yeah, I don't get it. That's all, you know, and I might be wrong. And um, I would love to hear anyone's opinion um, of why um, it, it, it is so moving um, beyond the, the, the rather kind of, what is it, um, modish interest in, you know, eating. Um, and I think someone mentioned gastrolit. Um, so other than that, but yeah, apologies if um, if someone feels 
that I haven't uh, got something, but I, I, I really tried. Um, so yeah, cheers.